Okay, so today we are going to talk about one of the most unfashionable bits of kit that the ERC Pierced has. The poor old pigtail stent. Now, if we were at a disco, the pigtail stent would be at the edge of the dance floor whilst the metal stents were all strutting their stuff uh, on the big stage. Okay, if you're a chef, the pigtail stent is an onion and the metal stent is this cool garlic that uh, is uh, keeping everybody happy. But the pigtail stent is your loyal friend, okay? And if we're talking about migration, the pigtail stent will never leave you. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk about indication and then a few issues about deployment. Um, uh, pigtail stents, let, let's just think a little bit about the technology. Bile does not drain down the internal lumen of the pigtail stent. So it works by splinting, essentially, the ampulla, all right? And so if you think of this as the bile duct, um, the pigtail stent sits here and bile drains uh, around it. Okay, so the bile will drain here and here. And it's one of the reasons why um, uh, if we're leaving pigtail stents in for a reasonable length of time, we often like to put two in because of this uh, belief, with some evidence to it, that you get improved drainage around it. Now this is the reason why we don't use pigtail stents for strictures, because again, if you've got no drainage through the internal lumen, most of these stents are um, uh, seven French that we use within the bile duct, um, you, if you use a, a pigtail stent for a stricture, then that tends to obstruct very quickly. So the indications, not for strictures, um, usually in the post-sphincterotomy state, again, because of exactly the same reason. Now the usual scenario would be where you have, you are certain that you have not cleared stones from the bile duct, the patient perhaps needs to come back for another procedure, or perhaps you uh, have cleared the stones, but you're worried that mole stones are going to come uh, out of the gallbladder before cholecystectomy, and so you may wish to consider putting in a pigtail stent for that. We've said that pigtail stents are pretty uncool, they're pretty unfashionable, but they are incredibly useful, but I think they are much harder to deploy properly, particularly in certain circumstances, than a metal stent. Metal stent, you get it, you get the right length, top and bottom, you can't go wrong. Pigtail stents are pretty tricky. And that's partly because, as I showed on the previous uh, picture, the, the pigtail itself is about three to four centimetres long, okay? Um, and when one is deploying this uh, into the biliary tree, one needs to be aware that the, the proximal three to four centimetres is going to curl in a pigtail. Now, What's the importance of that? Well, the first is that if you start deploying the stent too low, then there is always the risk of the pigtail curling into the cystic duct. If, on the other hand, you pass up the, the, the pigtail stent uh, on the pusher too high, then particularly if you have a non-dilated biliary tree, you, you go beyond a point where the pigtail can form. Now, I think failure to form a nice pigtail is possibly largely aesthetic. Um, uh, it's certainly, one is never very pleased seeing a pigtail hooked into the intrapatic ducts. And I have to say, once or twice over the years, patients had, have had significant pain related to a pigtail that appears to be just hooked into a small branch. So one does want to deploy the pigtail if one can. Um, and in a dilated duct like this, it's very easy. Um, one has the, uh, the 035 wire nicely in the intrapatics. There is usually something between uh, six and 10 centimeters of the wire, uh, which are the radio opaque floppy tip, as we sometimes call it. When one is passing the pigtail stent uh, into the correct position, one wants to have the uh, radio opaque um, uh, hydrophilic floppy tip of the wire well above the stent. And the reason for that is if you have the floppy tip within the, 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 the stent itself, then uh, the, the curvature of the stent uh, will 
overcome the floppiness uh, of the wire and your stent will start deploying too early. Okay, so one needs to be with the pushing catheter, passing the stent up to uh, uh, the common hepatic duct, but above the, the cystic duct junction. Uh, we need good fluoroscopy for this technique. When the stent is then at, at this position, one then slowly draws back the wire um, and as the wire, the, 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 the floppy part of the wire comes into the tip of the, the pigtail stent, this will start to take the bend. Okay, now the problem is that as I say, you have about four centimeters of, um, the, uh, of curvature of the pigtail. And so at this point, one does then need to start pushing the stent in further. And what one wants is that as one pushes the stent in, which has started to take the curve, that that pigtail will then form. Now, that looks terribly easy, and it is very easy where you've got a significantly dilated bile duct. Um, if you have quite a narrow bile duct like this, um, a, a scenario for whatever reason, this stone is stuck there, you want to put in a pigtail stent, um, uh, then this can be a real challenge where getting where there is insufficient space to uh, pigtail the stent um, and so one has to pay particular attention to this process um, uh, at that point in the procedure and in this scenario it isn't at all uncommon even in expert hands to be honest to find that that the uh, the pigtail doesn't form and that the, the stent, the pigtail stent, has curved into the intrahepatic ducts. Um, that usually isn't a problem in itself, but again, be aware that you've got, f if your pigtail doesn't form, then you have essentially got at least four centimetres of stent that you thought were going to be incorporated into the curve uh, of the pigtail. Now that can have relevance at the bottom end here, because You've deployed the stent at the top end, now you need to, to deploy the stent uh, at the bottom end. And again, um, you have three or four centimetres of pigtail. And the stent, when it comes out of the, um, the bridge of the, um, the duodenoscope, it will want to take, to, to adopt its curvature. Now, if you are a long way, from the, uh, the ampulla, as you deploy this part of the, the stent, particularly if you have a short scope position, so you're coming in quite flat and your pigtail stent is up here, the risk is that as you push the stent in, the, the, this distal end of the pigtail comes out and it takes its curve. If it then takes its curve, you're lost. Okay, there is absolutely or virtually no chance whatever of advancing that stent further. So if you have not got your stent in as far as you want to get it in, and the pigtail here has started to take its curve, you're stuck because you cannot uh, uh, recover uh, the straightness of the deployment system. So you really do at this point when your stent is up the bile duct and you're just needing to deploy, you need to stay up close and personal against the ampulla and certainly as uh, if you can be below the ampulla so that you're driving the stent up in this direction, then that is your best chance to be able to properly deploy the pigtail stent. Now, when you are happy that it is deployed proximally, then of course, one needs to then deploy the pigtail um, and uh, one does not want to be so close to the papilla that one then uh, deploys the entirety of the pigtail uh, in the, um, in the, in the, the bile duct itself. And so uh, when one is satisfied that one has the pigtail in a good position curled proximally um, and that one is uh, uh, sure that the pigtail is uh, uh, come out of the, uh, the bridge of the uh, duodenoscope, one then uh, uh, tip down, look away, and then as one pushes out with the pushing catheter, that pigtail will then deploy, and one then pulls the wire out to deploy the stent. Um, so 
in summary, I think pigtail stents are a vital tool. Um, they're not very sexy. They are really important. Uh, they, their deployment can be done and often is done very, very poorly. And I hope that if you uh, adopt some of these rules to your practice, you might find that that frustrating scenario that occurs occasionally of at the end of a, perhaps a difficult procedure, all you need to do is to put in the pigtail stent and before you know it, it's curled here, it's fallen out, and then you have to take the stent out and start all over again. That is much less likely to happen if you follow some of these rules. Thanks very much.